All right, nomenclature is a systematic way of naming. Uh, it's a system of naming. Uh, you maybe heard of binomial nomenclature last year in biology class. Uh, well, chemical nomenclature has a set of rules, uh, and just like anything else, there are a few exceptions. Uh, but before they had names, they, had, they used things such as this. These are called a common name for chemicals. Uh, and you probably have used some of these. Maybe uh, you know or heard of the chemical name for baking soda, uh, or table salt, or quicksilver being mercury. Uh, things like that, laughing gas, N2O, uh, lias, sodium hydroxide, used in soap, uh, and, and maybe a few others that you could possibly name off the top of your head, ammonia, for example, um, things such as that. All right, um, a, a discussion of naming, though, has to start with a discussion of ionic and covalent bonds, uh, because ionic substances are named with a different set of rules than covalent substances. Uh, so looking at this list we have to be able to pick out which ones are ionic and which ones covalent so that we can apply the correct set of rules. Uh, well, it's actually pretty simple. An ionic bond consists of a positive and negative ion, a charged atom. Uh, and so that's what we normally use. So we, we say that uh, if you have an ionic bond, you have a metal the positive ion, bonded to a negative ion, which to start out with with binary substance, meaning just two other elements, it's a nonmetal. Uh, so you have to be able to pick those out on the periodic table. And so this picture here shows this stair step right here that separates the metals and the, from the nonmetals on the periodic table. This is a color-coded chart. You can see the metals are in gray. Most of the periodic table are metals. The nonmetals are located above the stair step, with the exception of hydrogen. Hydrogen does belong over there with the nonmetals. Um, now, there are things such as, uh, are called metalloids, which are in between metals and nonmetals, but for naming purposes, if it's above the stairs, we're going to treat it as if it's a nonmetal, and if it's below the stairs or to the left, um, then it's a metal. So looking back at that list, it's pretty easy to pick out the ionic ones. That is sodium. Sodium is in the first column on the periodic table. It's a metal. Uh, we have iron. Uh, rubidium, magnesium, and aluminum. So those are the ionic substances. The others consist of two nonmetals. C and O are both above the stairs. C and H, S and O, S, I and O, P and O. Uh, so they would be the covalent substances. So we're going to start with naming co or, uh, ionic binary substances. Um, so binary means it's only containing two, two different elements. So aluminum and maybe oxygen, or, or lithium and maybe fluorine. So just two different elements. Uh, the key to this is the positive element is always written first. So that means the metal is always written first, because the metals are the positive ions. So here, there's the two steps, pretty simple. Write the positive ion and its charge, and write the negative ion and its charge. Now looking at these three examples, you can see they have a common ending. So right away, I know that, first of all, this is ionic, and I know it's ionic because it has sodium, and sodium's a metal. And then I know it's a binary ionic substance because the ending is IDE. Now there are a few exceptions to that, but binary substances are always ending in IDE. All right, so what I do is I write the positive ion symbol, um, and then in the upper right corner Excuse me, we'd like to see the file in the office, please. is where we put our charge. Billy Connor, Negative Hunter, ion. Jeremy Jaro, John Keating. And it's charge and Michael Weber. These young men, please come to the office at this time. Barium plus two, oxide. So we're not going to find oxide on the periodic table, but we got oxygen. We're not going to find chloride on the periodic table, but we got chlorine. Last one, aluminum plus three, nitrogen, not nitride, minus three. I mean, so we started with simple examples. What I mean by simple is you can see the charges, plus one and minus one, are already balanced. When the charges are already balanced, you just rewrite the formula. So plus 1, minus 1, already balanced. Plus 2, minus 2, already balanced. Plus 3, minus 3, again, already balanced. So that's the simplest type. But what happens when the charges are not balanced? So if the charges are balanced, you're done, because the overall charge in an ionic substance has to add up to 0. But what if they're not balanced, like this one? Uh, calcium is Ca with a plus 2, 
bromide, again, I know it's ionic because it has a metal and a non-metal, and then I know it's binary because it ends in IDE, so bromine with a minus one charge. So now the charges are not balanced. Uh, well, the way we deal that is you take that number, put it down there, and that number, and place it down there. So you, we say we cross the charges. Now, what you're re not really crossing a minus one, you're really saying that I have one calcium, and you're not crossing a positive two, you're saying I have two bromines. So the one goes here and the two goes there, but we never write a one. So it's one calcium, but we don't write the one, and two bromines. And so what that does is it balances out the charges, because this is plus two. This is minus one, but you have two of them, so plus two and minus two will balance. Uh, lithium phosphide, again, ionic, it's a metal. IDE ending, tells us it's binary, Li with a plus one. Phosphorus is what we'd have there with a minus three. So plus one, minus three, we cross them down, and you get Li3P. Aluminum iodide, Al plus 3, iodide minus 1, cross them, Al gets the 1, but we don't write 1s, I gets a 3. So aluminum iodide, Al I3. If you make a mistake and you do cross them down when you weren't supposed to, magnesium plus 2, sulfide would be sulfur minus 2. If you did cross those, you'd get Mg2F2, but with ionic substances, we always reduce um, if we can divide by 2, divide by 3, we do that. So MGS. See, and had you realized in the beginning that they were already balanced, then you would have just left it as MGS. So you end up in the right place. Now, Roman numerals. Some elements have more than one charge. We have to indicate that in the name. Uh, well, we're writing formulas, so the name's going to be done for us. So when you come across elements with a Roman numeral after them. Well, we know iron is Fe, and iron can be two different charges, plus two or plus three. So if it's iron with a plus two, we use Roman numeral two. If it's iron with a plus three, we use Roman numeral number three. And the same rules apply. I put it in the upper right. Chloride, it's ionic, and it's binary. Minus one, cross the charges, and I get FeCO2. In this case, with a three and a minus one, cross the charges, Fe. CL3. All right, lithium oxide. Lithium is a plus one. Oxide, that would be oxygen minus two. Cross them and you get Li2O. C with a plus two. C copper can also be a positive one, but it has Roman numeral two, so we know which one we're talking about. Minus one, CuBr2. Mn plus four, F minus one. MnF4, calcium, Ca plus 2, S minus 2, so CaF, already balanced. If I did cross them, I'd get 2 and 2, so I would have to reduce. And then the last one, zinc is a plus 2, phosphide would be phosphorus minus 3, so I end up with Zn3, P2. So that is binary ionic compounds. Um, and how we write the formulas from the name.